everyone, it's Deb here from Deb's Greenhouse. Welcome back to our holiday special tutorials. Today we are going to make a 20 inch wreath using fresh greens. We're gonna start with our uh, white pine. This is my favorite because it's the most fragrant, also has a really nice dark forest green color to it. The next branch we're gonna use is cedar. What I really like about cedar is that on the back side, it's quite lime colored and on the front side, it's a little bit more dark. We're gonna use the lime side facing up for this workshop. And the final one is silver fir. So silver fir is really silvery on the back side and dark green on the front. We're gonna have the silver facing upwards. So to make a wreath, we're going to make little bunches of each branch. I'm gonna get started. We're just gonna cut a few pieces of each Sometimes if it's really full like this, we're only going to use one. So that's it for the cedar. For the silver fir, we're just going to cut a nice piece again, max eight, nine inches. So that's what we have there. And for the pine, same thing. When we cut the pine, we're going to strategically put our clippers in so that we're not giving a big haircut to all the other needles. That way this edge still looks good and we can use it in another arrangement or in the next bundle. So taking these three items, we are going to wire them together. We could wire it just like this, but we're gonna add a pick. So I, I picked up a whole bunch of these. I really love gold. And what we're gonna do is just cut one off and put one in each bundle. Okay, so I've got the lime color facing up on the cedar. I have the blue facing up on the silver and the two pieces of pine. Just gonna layer in that gold pick. It's super sparkly. I don't know if you can tell. We're gonna hold it like a toddler holds a spoon kind of like a savage and hold it nice and snug wiring it on so holding the wire down with our thumb and wrapping around really tight in our other wreath workshop we did three times I'm doing it tighter in this one because I have more items in there I want it to be really snug give that a snip and just twist this off gently So now we're gonna make about 10 more. Okay, got all 10, and we're going to start putting them onto our frame. Now this is actually pretty simple, and you can do this at home if you want, using this tutorial as your guide, or come and make one in a workshop with us. So we've got our frame. We're gonna take that wire that we have, our florist wire. You can buy this in lots of places. We provide all the supplies if you're doing a workshop with us. Just gonna attach it to the frame and twist it. Give it a few twists so it doesn't unravel. There's so many ways you can be creative when making a wreath. For this, we are going to lay them like that. You can alternate them slightly with each branch. Completely fine. We'll give it a fuller look. So we are going to take this, wrapping it around several times so that it is nice and tight. My hands are really sticky from the pine, like major sticky. I'm happy that is nice and snug. So you get the next one and you can play with this a bit. You wanna make sure you're covering all of the wire. If we go too far, you'll see a gap. So we kinda want it overlapping a generous amount so that it looks really full. You can go back later and add more, but it's easier just to make an extra bundle and have it really full to start off with. We just keep wiring. It's looking so good already. And this is only taking a few minutes. Now 
Now we're at the spot where we are ready to put in the final bundle and just tie it in a full circle. We're gonna gently tuck it underneath the first one and over that last one. And just be careful wiring this so we don't have a kind of a bald spot. This looks so good. I'm so happy with this. So happy. Okay, I'm happy that's good and snug. I'm gonna make a long tail and wire it back to the frame. That is excellent. Okay. This looks amazing. I, I haven't made a wreath like this in a long time. I'm absolutely in love with it. You guys, it's so pretty. Okay, so something to think about. Because this is a wire frame, I don't need to put a loop on the back. I can just put my wreath hanger on, on the piece of wire and hang it up. This is so gorgeous. I could leave it just like this. But I love red and I wanna add a little pop of red. So I'm going to make a bow and I do have some balls so that we can add as well. Okay, these are the things I gathered. I love this uh, plaid. It has, it has gold, like shiny gold in it, um, green and the red in it. So the gold, green and red ties in beautifully with all of these um, Christmas balls. I'm going to show you how to make the bow. For this wreath, we're going to make a bow. Now, there's different kinds of bows, different styles. There's so many kinds of bows you could make. I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna make this one for this wreath. This ribbon is the same on both sides. If you struggle with making bows or you haven't done it before but you wanna try, finding a ribbon that is the same on both sides is easier to work with. I really like some of the velvety ones that I have, but they, they only have color on one side and the back side is kind of plain. So you have more twisting to do. To start with my tail, I just cut it on a slight angle. That's usually what we do. Okay, so we're gonna make sure you have a long length of ribbon, like a lot. For the wreath, I want a little longer tail than I would use on a different project. So I'm going to start with about a foot. I'm not measuring it. And that's where my hand's gonna sit. We are going to weave this back and forth, just like that hard candy you see at Christmas time. Because it's the same on both sides, we can get away with it. We can get away with it. So we're gonna go like that. And just weave it back and forth, making this bubble slightly shorter than the first bubble. We like using ribbon that has wire in the edges. It's a lot easier to play with. Some people will tell you that you should have the same amount, you should have an odd amount or a different amount. I don't think it matters. Just do what you like. So I have it layered just like that. I've got four bubbles on each side, holding it tight in the middle. This is where having a third hand when you're crafting would come in handy. I have a long piece of wire, I'm gonna cut that. I want it really long so I can wire the bow to the wreath without having to make a second wire. So holding it still tightly, run that wire through, kind of pinch it so you're scrunching it up and you just twist it. I watched a lot of YouTube videos on how to perfect this. It took a while, I'm not going to lie. So we just want to cut this tail kind of the same length as this tail. Again, I don't measure, I'm just eyeballing it. Just give it a nice angle. Done with that for now. I'm going to fluff the bow after I attach it and I'm just going to assume this is the top. Doesn't matter because it's a circle.
If you have a bare spot, that'd be the great place to put the bow. We just finished twisting off the bow, making sure it's on there good. And now it's really easy to fluff this. You can pull the tails whichever way you want. Because there's wire in the ribbon, it's really easy. I like to alternate them and poof them up a bit. So one up, one down, one up, one down, poof it up. We're just making it bigger. And do the same with the other side. That one can go up. And it's easy to just keep playing with this. After you hang it too, you might want to fool around with the ribbon a little. It's probably easier to do when I'm not holding it up here. Okay. Very happy with how big that bow is. Now I'm just going to wire on some balls. Nice variety. I'm really liking it. So I'm just wiring three together, kind of getting them in the middle there, twisting them off so they're nice and tight. And then with a long wire, twisting them onto the back. There we have it. I love it. 